is of the likened unto ten virgins, which took the lambs and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise and five were foolish. They that were foolish took the lambs and took not oil with them. But the wise took oil in the, in the vessels with the lambs. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slumbered. And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. And all those virgins arose and trimmed the lambs. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lambs are gone out. Thank God for it. Verse mm. 9, but the wise answer saying, Not so, lest they did not, not enough for us and you. But go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourself. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready, they that were ready, they that were ready, they that were ready. Say, are you ready for 2015? So they that were ready went in with him. And the door was shut. Afterward came also the other virgins, saying, Lord, Lord, open for us. Wow. I know you're not. Um, but he answered and said unto them, and he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. Watch before and be, and for you know neither the day or the hour when the Son of Man I want to share four things or three things this morning. First of all, the Christian life is like likened unto a journey. And um, I know maybe some of you here came from different countries. I'm from Africa. Imagine the day you are flying for the first time to the US. Imagine you leaving your home and then getting at the airport, checking in your bags, and trying to find your passport. Your passport was never home. <laughs> that would be devastating. Imagine you in such a situation, like in countries where they have one flight a week, <laughs> or some of you driving from different provinces to different towns to fly, you should not miss the flight. Flight will cancel. So the Christian life is like somebody on a journey. Christian life is likened here to ten virgins that left their home to go somewhere. Just imagine you maybe for the, the first dating you had with somebody and said, please, today, somebody you really love. I said, please, let's get me at holiday in restaurant. How will you prepare for that? really love that person I tell you you will you will this is my wife get some medicare for your face you see angel just look angel see how she's putting her face on it now <laughs> that is a corner <laughs> I mean that first dating in the bank that you really love that person you will do everything to present yourself conscious you don't want to make mess up that blessed opportunity or think of you going for an interview in a job, your dream job. You've been praying for that job for years. And finally, the call is a place Monday, 8 p.m. or 8 a.m. is the interview. Will you go late? I mean, you will be maybe the whole night, <laughs> make sure that your files, everything is in place because. You don't want to mess up that chance in your life. Mm. But now, think about going to 2015. 
Ah, are you preparing for that? Ten virgins had a journey to make into a life-changing event. And some took it away. And uh, some believers that will see 2015 as a springboard. It's a springboard to awesome things. For me, I'm thinking, I'm thinking now of 2016, not 2015. Okay? <laughs> because the year is already charged. See, my prophecy, prophecy. is already set out. Then there was an ebon, ebon, ebon. The prophecy of 2015 is already established. So for me, it's already it's a, a done deal. Hallelujah. But imagine believers like these 10 virgins preparing for a life changing event and some took it lightly. They were not adequately prepared. So the question this morning, are you prepared for 2015? And how have you prepared yourself to face that year? <coughs> my parents, I grew up in it, my parents were very hardworking farmers. My father had a cocoa farm. They prepared for that season. I tell you, if you, you fail to spray the farm at a certain time, you lost all the crops. They become black and you lost it. You lost that year. So they, they know when to clear their farm. They know when to spray the farm. They know when to harvest the crop. So 2015, the Lord gave me a vision. I think when the first of our fasting here, he saw a tree with so many fruits hanging on that tree. Just so many fruits. The word surprised me when I was seeing that vision was I saw God, like an angel, went out, brought people under the fruit, under the fruit, under the tree. And you know what happened? Some were admiring the fruits. Beautiful fruits. They even touched the fruits. But nobody dared harvest it. And then he went out. Brought some new set of people, they came, they were all oh, wonderful three, they saw me in two pictures. And then they did the same thing. They went back. They brought a third group. Some did not only admire, some spread for their hand and others. Say in the name of Jesus, I refuse to admire the year. I reach out my faith to belong to me. I take that which belongs to me. I take my covenant blessing. I take my prophecy. I take the treasures. Every good thing in 2015, I take it by faith in the name of Jesus. The violence don't just admire things. The violence take it. Some will be complaining and some will say, it belongs to me, it's my father's own, I reach out and I take it. <coughs> now, let's see this one thing in this passage, please. Say the meeting. The first is a journey, the second is what? The meeting. The question is, what are you preparing for? Imagine the ten virgins, busy in their homes. What are you preparing for, young girls? Who are you preparing to meet? What do you need for the, for the appointment? The questions you must ask yourself about 2015 to place you in a place of opportunity. Because these 10 virgins, five were now in their own category, the wise. And the other five were in another category called what? The foolish. You know why? Say the meeting. Who are you planning to meet? What are you preparing for? What do you need for that appointment? How long will, will be the how long is the waiting the waiting time? They didn't put all this in the minds. 
and the troubles came because they were not prepared five were wise five were foolish what happened because some were not prepared for that season in the bible there's some three persons that bless me for one esther say esther she prepared to meet the king when she prepared well when the king saw her said this is the one i want 2015 is not you know in heaven there are no there are no yes yes are because of our earthly limitation heaven there's just one long good day you know that it's still one long good day one long good day but we here on earth we have seasons we have months every years are you prepared for 2015 Are you prepared to fight the battle and win? Are you prepared to do some extras you have lost them for? Are you prepared to go to the devil have lost me forever? So while you were fasting and praying, the devil is mad. Because he has lost the battle. Shout Jesus! Jesus has conquered for me. Lost you forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever. Hallelujah. So these virgins preparing themselves to meet that dream opportunity. Now marriage in in different countries and different cultures. Amen. In Israel, in the ancient times. It's not like today where you start engaging for many years. Some marriage are arranged by the parents. Even now, even at the Jewish culture, the two fathers arrange, you know, just surprise the boy and the girl, say some, that is a wife. I mean, they, they, they plan a meeting between two of you, between the girl and the boy. And sometimes the feast lasts for seven days, celebrating every day, eating and drinking. In this case, these friends, the friends, wanted a selection of the virgins coming together, like what happened with Esther. One thousand virgins just looking to pick one, and so they were preparing themselves for that dream day. I don't want to miss that, that opportunity. So Esther prepared herself to meet the king. Say never, never, never. never. Check and say never, never, never. never. Are you ready? Are you ready? Because the what God is showing you about 2015, listen. For those who did last year, all the prophecies I gave in 2014, I gave a calendar of events. Everything happened. Even about the change of religious powers. It happened as to be blessed. Last year. Go back to your notes and see. 2015 is going to be a very difficult year for the world. Okay? Don't think that. I mean, it's going to be a very difficult year for the politics of the world. The politics of the world. You know why? Because at the moment, the nations are geared against Israel. European, Europe, Europe. It's all taken on impeaching Israel president or declaring sanctions against Israel. And there's so much tension, things, United Nations, things are all around Jerusalem. Wars. Troubles. Do so not think that the devil is at peace. But for those who know their God. So my case is different. My case is different. So in the midst of darkness, I will shine. In the midst of crisis, I will rise. In the midst of trouble, I will distinguish. In the name of Jesus, 2015 will work for me. 2015 will bring forth for me. 2015 will be the best year of my life. I reach for my faith. I take my blessing. Life. I'm not a loser. Things to 
the shaking that will be established. Yeah. Say, in the midst of the shaking, yeah. I will be established. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Say, the Lord, look at me, say, the Lord, yeah. in the midst of the fears, yeah. we will be, yeah. be established. Now, what happened if the plan that, that got me sick yesterday is not found? Okay. You must put that 24 hours as it's touching. Nothing yet. Scientists are confused. They're trying to find out whether there's some laws in certain height that, that vanishes late. So what happened? Politicians don't know what to do, you know. There's fear in high territories, but what is happening in the world? So we know the answer. We know the answer. The end time. Jesus is coming back again. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, the meeting, how do you prepare yourself for the meeting? That is important for your life. As I sit here, the first thing that will change your life is a journey. Say a journey. There is an appointment. But you will take some steps into that appointment that will change your life. Amen. Second thing that will change your life is a meeting. Say a meeting. Say never a meeting. A meeting. Somebody you will meet in a place that will usher you all the grace. That will bring some new things in your life. God is arranging people for you to meet. Say never. God is arranging people for you to meet there's a meeting that will change your life there's a meeting that will change your life there's a meeting that will change your life it might be in the airport it might be in the plane it might be in a car it might be in a taxi it might be in your job center there's a meeting God is arranging to change somebody's life are you ready for that meeting? The, the, the third thing this morning, before I go to my the, the <laughs> series of things of the message today, um, 2015 is like a field, say a field. One more time. <coughs> now, if they give you land, you have a choice to allow weeds to grow in the land or you choose what to plant. Say 2015. It's a field given to me by God. You choose what to plant. Say, so choose what to plant. You can idle and allow wheat grow in the field and complain. You can decide to plant, say, I plant health, I plant wealth, I plant peace, I plant riches, I plant industries, I plant businesses in the field. So many people sit down and complain, oh, what is happening? The question is, what did you plant? Mm. Say the Paul, <coughs> what are you planting? <coughs> Say God has given me a field called 2015. Now you choose the seeds to plant. Choose what? So now. Some believers are sinners in prayer, sowing their seed in the soil. They are fasting, they are sowing their seed. They are sowing seed for the first time. They are sowing seed for businesses. They are sowing seed for greatness. They are sowing seed for the school. And when the harvest begins, now jealousy begins. Say that, when I was busy planting, where were you? <laughs> So you decide, say, never decide. You sow. We are here. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. So it depends on what you sow. The year is ahead of us. It's, it's, a, it's a field. You choose to sow seeds. Now let's talk about the ten virgins. Amen. Now the wise virgins and the foolish virgins, hey, Make your people foolish and some wise. The issue is, say, do you have some enough oil? Do you have enough oil? 
Do you have enough oil to carry you through? So some, some of these veggies did not prepare for the season. So along the line, they didn't have oil to sustain their journey. Now the lambs went off. Thanks. You need to have the oil to keep the lamb burning. And without this oil, you'll be in darkness. The oil is the Holy Spirit. You need to allow to, to fill your land with oil and take extra oil that will keep you along the way. Once you allow your land go off, darkness feels the press. Look at the person. Let me look at the person. Let me look at the person. How established is your Christian life? I mean, look left and right. Take a serious place. Let's ask some questions. I have some five questions to talk to. Number one, say number one question this morning. Do you have enough oil? Discuss, please. Do you have enough oil? To carry you through the process? Will you tell me that yes? There are some believers, they start fire, 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 six months, darkness. <laughs> okay. They start jumping, jumping, jumping the next four months. Blackout. No oil in the land. Oil vanish. They now start complaining and start worrying. They start compromising. The oil is on dry. Second question this, this morning, how established is your Christian life? Are you standing? Are you firm? Are you really sure that you can face the wind? There is no magic in Christ. If you don't build yourself firm, the wind will push you down. Are you following the church? So you need to do what? Establish yourself in the faith. See the Bible? Establish yourself in the faith. Take it serious. It's a disgrace to see believers defeated in the, in the, in the world by devils. Not because the devils, because they did not establish themselves in the faith. Faith is not seriousness in the church. It's not church attendance. It's not baptism. It's relationship with Jesus Christ. That intimate, grounded in the word of God. That nothing can push you down. Say nothing. nothing. Can shake my life. Say nothing. Can shake my life. You know, the sign, so, let me say the first sign of unestablished Christians. But you know the first sign? They always plead the blood of Jesus. They always do what? It's a sign of fear. It's ignorance. Sign of what? Yeah. Yeah. Listen, listen. They always plead what? You know why? They seem trouble everywhere. Fear. Those who are established, they say, I can handle this in the name of Jesus. So let me just say, the blood of my, of my car, the blood of my house, the blood, you know, I fear. So greater is he that is in me, that he that is in the world. I can face him. I can handle this. I can take this. I can achieve it. So stop moving with fear everywhere. I went to see London, you know, in this big apartment. I was so surprised. You can see the believers' doors. They are all they are so dirty. Yes, Just enter the maybe a New Hampshire apartment. There, New Hampshire apartment. Oh, the land. New Hampshire apartment. Look at the doors. When you see a Christian door, because of fear, there is always stain everywhere. But then what? They've anointed the post, anointed the door, even the front cover. I went to the house, even the walls, they put the blood on the wall, they would be on the walls. I said, Sister, <laughs> do you not fear the oil on the wall? <laughs> do you have some oil in your life? Hey. Without that oil, you can paint your house with, 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 oh with olive oil. <laughs> so they will paint your house with olive oil. Without the oil in your life, you see the loser. 
So stop living a fearful life. Know the word of God. Say know the word of God. So you need this oil not in the walls. The word. In your life. So the oil in my life. So believers fail because they have fear. They see the devil in the ways, devil in my pallor, devil in my chair, and they live without oil in their life. How established are you in Christ? For those who are established, they fear no evil. So I fear no evil. I, fear no evil. I can face it. Christ is in me. I have the word in me. I have the Holy Spirit in me. The devil cannot touch me. Hallelujah. Amen. When you see flies on a stove, you know that word? There's no fire on the stove. Flies don't settle on the hot stove. So have oil in your life and flies will run away. The third question this morning Will you end up in the dark or in the light? They all love their homes with lights, with lamps, tree. Along the way, five ended in darkness. Five continuous celebrating with the light of God. Say the book at the book. Will you end up in dark? Or in the light? Confused? Or blessed? It depends on you today. You decide and say, no power of the world will push me into darkness. I am a child of the light. I walk in the light. I refuse to live in darkness. I refuse to have no connection with darkness. Hallelujah. So darkness begins when they start listening to lies. Listening to stories that are not biblical. Now, so these ten virgins, something happened to all of them. Say all of them. Midnight crisis. Say midnight crisis. All of them went through the darkness at midnight. All of them went through the time of sleeping. And now, after the midnight hour, what happened? Say never. You know true believers at the midnight hour. I mean, look at the I will know whether you are true. After the shaking, after the midnight, after the troubles, will you still be standing or you falling? All of us can jump and say, Happy New Year! Yeah. On Monday, job manager will be to fly with you. How will I do it? February, they say you are fired. How will you handle it? March, they say, you know, in front of the church, the shaking, so the shaking will come. But those who will stand after the shaking are those who are going to make it. Everybody will go through some form of midnight, of darkness. But some of us will be standing after the shaking. Only the among those who are standing. Let me see those who are standing. Hallelujah. So, midnight came. Say, Nepal, are you ready? 2015. Matthew 25 from verse 1 to 13, please. They seem to be everywhere fear. Those who are established, they say, I can handle this in the name of Jesus. So let me just say, the blood of my car, the blood of my house, the blood of who I fear. So greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I can face him. I can handle this. I can take this. I can achieve it. So stop moving with fear everywhere. I went to see London. You know, in this big apartment. I was so surprised. You can see the believers' doors. They are all they're so dirty. Let's stop. Just enter the, maybe a uh, New Hampshire apartment there. No New Hampshire apartment. Old uh, land. New Hampshire apartment. Look at the doors. When you see a Christian door, because of fear, there's only a state everywhere. But you have what? 
have anointed the post, anointed the door, even the front of them. Oh, yes, they can pray. Even I went to the house, even the walls, they put the block on the wall, the wood, then the walls. I said, Sister, <laughs> demon does not fear the oil on the wall. <laughs> Do you have some oil in your life? Hey. Without that oil, you can paint your house with with with, oh with olive oil. <laughs> so they will paint your house with olive oil. Without the oil in your life, you see the rooster. So stop living a fearful life. Know the word of God. Say know the word of God. So you need this oil not in the walls, but where? In your life. To the oil in my life. So believers fail because they have fear. They see the devil in the waist, devil in my pallor, devil in my chair, and they live without oil in their life. How established are you in Christ? For those who are established, they fear no evil. So I fear no evil. I can face it. Christ is in me. I have the word in me. I have the Holy Spirit in me. The devil cannot touch me. Hallelujah. Amen. When you see flies on a stove, know that what? There's no fire on the stove. Flies don't settle on the hot stove. So have oil in your life and flies will run away. The third question this morning. Will you end up in the dark or in the light? They all left their homes with lights, with lamps, three. Along the way, five ended in darkness. Five continued celebrating with the light of God. Will you end up in dark? Or in, or in the light, confused or blessed, it depends on you today. You decide and say, no power of the world will push me into darkness. I am a child of the light. I walk in the light. I refuse to live in darkness. I refuse to have no connection with darkness. Hallelujah. So darkness begins when they start listening to lies. Listening to stories that are not biblical. Now, so these ten virgins, something happened to all of them. Say all of them. Oh. Midnight crisis. Say midnight crisis. Midnight. All of them went through the darkness at midnight. All of them went through the time of sleeping. And now, after the midnight hour, what happened? Say never. never. You know true believers after midnight, after midnight hour. I mean, look at them, say never. I will know whether you are true. Know you are true. After the shaking, after, after the midnight, after, midnight. after the troubles, will you still be standing or you falling? <laughs> On Monday, job manager begin to fry with you. How will I do it? February, they say you are fired. How will you handle it? March, they say, you know, enter the church. The shaking, the shaking will come. But those who will stand after the shaking are those who are going to make it. Everybody will go through some form of midnight of darkness. But some of us will be standing after the shaking. Only the among those are standing. Let me see those who are standing. Hallelujah. So, midnight came. After the midnight, five, all of them, say all of them, try to now they turn on the lights. Something happened while they were sleeping. The five foolish ones, the oil evaporated. <laughs> and then for now, they find the lamps are off. No more light. They are in darkness. Please give me some oil. Says, sorry, go and look for the songs. I don't want to be in darkness. You go look for the songs. Go and buy for yourself. Say, buy for yourself. Say, this oil is not for sale. 
you might better go and look for yourself. And I can't share my fire with you. And some things you cannot share. You cannot share salvation. You can say the same thing. You cannot share salvation. You go and die for yourself. And then the crisis began now. While the five went to buy, <coughs> there was a cry, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, and those that were ready entered. Mm -hmm. Say, I will enter, I will enter. in the place of opportunity. I will enter in the place of hell. 2015, I will not stay outside. I'll be inside. In the name of Jesus, say the boy, you will be inside, not outside. You'll be where things are happening. You'll be in the place of blessing. You'll be in the place of celebration. You'll be in the place of rejoicing. You'll be in the place of fulfilled dreams. You'll be in the place of the expectation fulfilled. When these ten five regimes finally met their, their husbands, then stories were changed, wedding was going on, celebrating the, the, the future and the blessedness. They had a knock at the door. Boom, boom, boom. I was supposed to be there also. <laughs> I was, we began this journey together. <laughs> I almost entered. <laughs> oh my God. I almost I was supposed to but they, they came late and the door was shut say the door we're beginning together we'll end together no devil will keep you behind listen here your body say no devil will keep me behind say in the name of Jesus no devil will keep me behind in this journey to 2015, we are not going to be behind. We are going to be in the place that things happen. In the center of the events. We are not going to be outside the newsroom. We are going to be in the place where things happen. Hallelujah. The question is, are you prepared? Are you ready for this year? Because the wise people, the wise, they prepare to meet the opportunity. They prepare for the interview. They prepare for their greatness. They prepare for the blessedness ahead of them. They prepare the seed to sow. They prepare to see the change in the living of God. They prepare. For the of places for me. Yeah, you think you see? You see? I want us to spend five minutes to do three things. Amen. Forget about your number today. Hallelujah. The question is what are the seeds you want to sow to the property? The field is before you. Hallelujah. You know, I'll tell people that. There's so much money in the world. Why should you be poor? There's so much wealth in the world. I was flying to Africa with a plane full of Chinese. So I tried to do some interviews. I asked one African guy, I said, how do you see Africa? He said, so much, too much poverty. Too much poverty everywhere. I asked another guy, how do you see Africa? He said, corruption everywhere. I asked the Chinese guy, how do you see Africa? I say, say, there's so much opportunities. There's so much investment opportunities. He say, I just came from flying with 30 workers to work for my company. Coming from China, as houses of them. Why some are seeing suffering, poverty, wretchedness, corruption, some say, Gabon is so bad. Gotra Guinea is so bad. Just harvest the leaves and make money. I thought it just harvest what? Just harvest the green leaves and they make money. <laughs> just harvest the potato leaves. They can make money. How many you, you claim to? You claim to so leaves that are falling they're useless. They make what? Harvest just the roots of all of the. You know, there's so much wealth. There's so much wealth. Behind our church in Tiko, our church in Cameroon called Tiko, 
is that it wouldn't make us to the sea. Amen. <coughs> so I went there to see what's happening. I saw two Chinese boats. Fishing, fishing men. Fishermen. Is it fish? You know? Fishermen from China from China doing their fishing. They are two <laughs> I said, please, can I buy some fish? I said, no, everything is going to China. Then pack them. Yes, don't sell them. I mean, you see fish and I cannot buy one. They catch everything. They, they parcel them. Well, it's a job to carry them to the, to the seaport sea straight to China. So those who are there cannot eat fresh fish. <laughs> cannot eat fresh fish. To buy fresh fish in some of those countries now is expensive. You cannot get it. You see it, you don't eat it. Don't sell it. Don't sell it for you. So the years ahead of us, you decide to say, I want to sow for wealth. You don't just watch the year and wait for the year. You decide to sow. So tonight, or this morning, please, think of what do you want to sow based on what you want to harvest. Amen. You sow by by, by Proclaiming, declaring, prophesying, releasing words in the atmosphere to produce for you. You sow by having a clear vision of the expectation and releasing seeds into that year. Amen. Because that will things that must happen, say must happen in my life. Number two, we must decide to take it. So take it. You want a wife, do what? Take it. I came when I see gentlemen who cannot marry. Say, Michelle, pray for me. One year, I can't be a man. I see for what? Pray for me for marriage. One year, two years, pray for me. Pray for me. What I'm praying for? I can't get praying for marriage. For how long we pray for marriage? It's stupidity to see a gentleman who has a job. I don't have the courage to do what? To take a woman. And they keep praying, 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 praying until they become a prey. Say <laughs> so they pray until they become what? A prey. <laughs> they take it. Say so they will take it. The violent take it. But they just keep wasting all your years. Reach out by faith. Take a giant step for your destiny. Take a giant step for that job. Take a step to create that business. Take something. Say, take it. The first thing they want, so it. So they do what? Take it. Hallelujah. Can we just take over that place? Let's pray to two prayers. Think of some things you want to sow from January 1st. Some things must begin to grow in your life, grow in your field. Some things you must sow by choice. And say, I'm going for this. I release this in my future. Begin to pray, begin to pray, begin to pray. Give up your voice, lift up your voice. Sow some seeds in your field. Sow some seeds in your field. Sow some seeds in your field. Begin to release some things in your future. Release some things in your future. Release some things in your field. Confess it, just confess it, just confess it. Lord, we sow husbands, we sow wives, we sow businesses, we sow industries, we sow projects, we sow buildings, we sow homes. I see men and women harvesting homes, harvesting businesses, harvesting treasures, harvesting wealth. Something awesome. They grow from our field. We sow life. We sow until 
together. Say the name of Jesus. Good things begin to grow in my field. From January 2015, good things begin to grow in my field. From February, March, April, May, June. Treasures in my field. Treasures in my field. My expectation spring forth. My expectations spring forth. My expectations spring forth. God those things to manifest.
hand, please. Say this hand. This hand. We'll take it. Okay. Now take it serious, please. Say this hand. This hand. We'll take it. Okay. This hand. This hand. Who conquered enemies? This hands will sign contracts. This hands I will change lives. This hands will receive abundance. This hands will not be conquered by any power in the name of Jesus. No force that push my hand outward. This hands receive from God. This hands receive. Me 